we begin today chapter 6. Actually, we'll give over at the entirety of chapter 6 today. What have we learned? That the vitality of our divine soul is directly from the name of God. Shema Vaya, the Tetragrammaton. It's what gives us vitality. Our physical being receives its vitality direct from God himself, from the name of God, from the Shekhinah, from the divine presence of God. When is this, though, that we receive directly vitality to our physical being directly from a divine place, from the divine soul that is animated by the divine name. That is only in a divine time. And when is that divine time? The time is the holy temple. When the divine presence was real, was palpable, was present in the world in general, and specifically I'm not in the in world general, in Israel, in the Holy Temple, specifically. And it meant that the body got direct vitality and was powered by the divine soul. Again, through the Tetragrammaton that is animating the divine soul. But what's important over here, it's our physical reality was being animated <laughs> by that. But that was only at that time. With the destruction of the Holy Temple, what did that mean? It meant the physical displacement of the Jewish people, right? And no longer um, Jerusalem and the Holy Land was the home of the Jewish people. But this caused also an alienation to the Shekhinah, the divine presence of God went into exile. Not only did we, the Jewish people, go into exile, but the divine presence of God went into exile, what we call the Shechina. Interesting, the word Shechina is a feminine term. You know, people, parenthetically, I'm saying this now, people ask, Does, is God male or female? And sometimes people just want to say, oh, oh well, she... Well, there is a she of the divine, and that's called the Shekhinah, the divine presence. That divine presence, again, was in the times of the Holy Temple, but then it went into exile. And that's why, in reference to the Shekhinah, it says, your mother went, was sent away, meaning departure of the Shekhinah, that divine presence of God. So, how did that affect the world? It affected the world that now, instead of getting direct animation, or at least in the Holy Land, right, and, and the Jewish people in the Holy Land, it meant that the vital force was no longer directly from the Tetragrammaton, from the Shema Vaya, that was animating the individual, their physical reality, but it now came through a new filter, and that's called Klippa. Klippas Neiga. Klippas a shell. It now was filtered through this shell of Klippa, which is a negative energy. Why is it negative? It's a mixture of good and bad, but it's negative because it's concealing the Divine Presence. The Shechina is no longer palpably revealed. Is it there? Yeah, but hidden, concealed, in exile. That's what has occurred. Now, in the Shekhinah, what are we talking about in the name of God? The latter He. Is Malchus, Malchus, royalty, the Word of God, the presence of God, is in exile. Um, what does it mean again, exile? It means it's not directly animating force 
of the uh, of the Jewish soul in the in the land of Israel. It is now been contained, uh, so to speak, imprisoned in a sense. The that life force uh, in Klippa. So now that it's hidden, the life force is coming from Klippa to the individual. And for that matter, all of everything else. What does that mean? So what does this mean? So it means like this. So the question that we had in chapter 4, why is the Torah tell us that someone who commits a sin that has a punishment of excision early or, or early death by divine agency, uh, we see that people live well beyond 15, 60 years old. They live, um, and they live uh, peaceful, content lives. We don't see it. every sinner dying at that point. So when did that actually happen? In times of the Holy Temple. When the life force was direct from the Shema Vaya, from the name of God, the Tetragrammaton, the physical reality, that's where God had its vitality. If you had sinned in such a way that you cut off the breath, as we explained yesterday, of God to give you vitality, then yes, you lasted to 50 or 60 years. But over to, it's a 2,000 years now, uh, just about, that we've been in exile. And the vitality means it's not coming from the name of God directly, but it's hidden, it's being filtered, it's being concealed in exile, and we're getting our vitality not direct, we're getting it from Klippa, Klippas Naiga means a translucent klippa shell that covers over on the divinity. And, we're, and because of that, it's a negative force for that reason alone, even though there's good there. But what now that creates is a reality that that's where the normative life force is coming from. So, listen to this quite based on the Zohar um, paradox as a result now so we spoke about two levels of uh, uh, of vitality direct from God Shem Hashem Shem Avaya the name of Avaya Tetragrammaton and now through Klippas now you go through this this shell that is translucent and it has good and bad in it right but Mostly negative force because it is concealing the divine presence, the Shekhinah. But now that I have um, that vitality normatively coming from there, if I choose to do evil, something truly negative, then what happens is I'm taking that negative force of Klippas Neugah and bringing it even further down into complete negativity, complete evil. Shalish Klippas is complete three powers of, of unholiness that is completely um, reduce, uh, re uh, bringing the Shechina into now a, a greater exile as a result when I do something sinful. And not only that, the Zohar teaches us that that what I'm doing now is actually bringing more negative vitality th through the shalish klipas that's made through the three negative um, negative forces that because of the uh, choice I've done I've made to do something that's a transgression a sin against God. It's bringing vitality though. And who's getting the majority of that vitality? Negative force? The individual sinned. Now, it's affecting the environment, literally. 
It's infect affecting other people, literally, but the chelik um, shabereish, the most of that negative influence, which is an influence, it is a power, is coming to that person who's the perpetrator of the sin, which gives him power, gives him more, more negative force, more of a disconnect from God, but they're getting more. And that more might be expressed. You know, I thought I was going to say this here, but, uh, you know, more money, more power, more uh, negative influence. Influence, though, negative. More being put up on a pedestal because, you know, they're a star of sorts. Or, you know. Um, and they're seeming on top of the world. Now, for the Jew, that can only last temporary. Um, learn more about that later. But that negative force is enlivening, again, in a negative way, against God. But in the person, and, you know, they, are, they might not even feel disconnect, but they are disconnected. They might feel actually... Um, on top of the world. Because through that negative force, they're getting, they're receiving the primary uh, vitality of negativity their way. And that will translate into things. Having things. But not having God. Ultimately, obviously, having things without God will turn on itself. That's not for now. And that's why the wicked prosper. And that's why they can live beyond 15, 60 years in the times of exile because where the vital force is coming from, the negative force, and they can live and be prosperous and seemingly have a wonderful life. They don't really. But that's got to dig deeper, as one can see from what ends up with them. Um, a life that uh, is godless. But this gives us an explanation of the concept. What an irony. Now, with that negative force, Um, that has gone into Kalipo, there's a positive thing that has happened. So what did we say? The He, which is the Shechina, the Divine Presence of God, Malchus, is the attribute, loyalty, has gone into exile. It's gone into negative forces. Which that itself is a mystery. But, so it is. That's the hay of God's name. What does that enable us then? We could do tshuva. Tashu hay, to return the hay. The hay in God's name. What are we returning? What are we returning? Not merely to God ourselves we're returning. Obviously, we're returning to God. That's the act that's being done. But you know what's happening? Our soul is being returned to God and to get its vitality from? Direct from God, not through Kalipa. Not only that we're going to get our vitality from there, but God himself has been redeemed, meaning the Shrina. The divine presence of God has been redeemed from exile. We've removed it, uplifted it. Tashuv returned it. Tashuv hay. We've returned the hay that fell. Because remember God's name. The hay fell into exile. That the, the divine presence fell into exile. It's now concealed. That hay 
you've returned it through your tshuva and brought, so to speak, God himself, the Shekhinah, the divine presence of God, right, back to its rightful place. Wow. What an empowerment that is. Next chapter, we're going to learn the details and what that means. We've now just touched upon that. That is something that we can do in exile because the vitality is not coming direct. In a time when it came direct, tshuva was a um, more of a challenged thing, difficult thing then, because if you cut yourself off, you cut yourself off. But today, that doesn't happen because the vitality anyways is not coming direct. So we don't cut ourselves off. That, even on the plus side, the negative side is that we're not getting direct vitality from, from God to our physical reality. The plus side to that is that that enables us that we could do chupa, that we could return, return the hay in God's name, the Shekhinah, the Divine Presence, because it's an exile. Powerful idea. More on that in the next um, next chapter. We'll uh, go into that into a greater detail. Um, all right, folks. Sharing is caring. Powerful teachings of the Alter Rebbe that I hope inspires you. I learned this so many times and each time it, every day. It's extremely inspiring. Please inspire others, either by sharing or even better. Um, give it over, the ideas to others. We are all part of helping other, ourselves and others to do tshuva, to bring them closer, to return the hay. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine, coming to you from my home in Montreal, Canada, where it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the time you have a wonderful day, a good Erev Shabbos, and a wonderful, meaningful Shabbos. Be well.